Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Rank, where I climb the online VGC20 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. For the last two days, we've been using a really fun team featuring Double Terrain with Pinkurchin, Alolan Raichu, and Urshifu, so we'll be playing a couple more games with it today. Before we get started with today's episode, this video is sponsored by The Ridge. The Ridge creates really awesome lifestyle products ranging from phone cases to backpacks, and their most popular product is the Ridge Wallet, which you can see right here. The Ridge Wallet is a super minimalistic modern day wallet that's able to fit 12 cards between these two metallic plates. There's also a strap or band for cash here in the back and it's super easy to use. You simply slide out your cards using this little indent here, pull out whatever you need, and slide back. Since getting the Ridge Wallet, I've moved away completely from my old wallet, but if you don't believe me, there are over 30,000 five-star reviews for this product. There's also free shipping, a lifetime warranty, and free returns, so you can feel free to try out the product. If you decide you don't like it, you can always get your money back. Right now, I am on their website. You can go to ridge.com slash VGC to check out all the different kinds of products that they have. This is my favorite wallet. It's the carbon fiber one, but as you can see, it comes in all kinds of different materials and colors. The Ridge also makes some really awesome products outside of wallets. I actually have been using a Ridge phone case, as you guys may have seen on this channel. And they also have a really awesome line of backpacks, which I enjoy. If you want to see which Ridge products I actually like the most, check out the link in the description below for everything that I personally use from the company. Like I've said before, I wouldn't accept a sponsorship on this channel unless it was for a company or for a product that I really believed in. And I truly love everything that the Ridge has to offer. I've been using the phone case, the wallet, and the backpack pretty consistently since getting them. So like I mentioned, you can go to rich.com slash VGC and use the promo code VGC for 10% off your next order. If you have any questions about these products, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter as well, because like I said, I've been using them for a long time and I really, really do believe in them. So thanks to the Ridge once again for sponsoring this video and let's get into today's episode. All right, let's just look for our first opponent of the day. Once again, thank you to the original creator of this team for posting it and for creating it. Once again, you can check him in the description below. This is a rental team as well, so feel free to try out the team yourselves. And thank you guys, as always, for tuning into these videos, for watching them, and for all the support. It's very, very much appreciated, and I'm excited to just keep making content for you all and hope everyone's doing all right. So let's get into the first game of today's episode. Um, there's a bunch of scary stuff here. There's the Tailwind from Whimsicott. Torko is really intriguing here because it's such a slow, a fast team otherwise. And Torko's a slow Pokemon. So I'm curious what that function on that team is. Uh, Porygon Z, I think, is what scares me the most here. Like, Porygon Z plus Tailwind looks like a very deadly combination. However, I do have Urshifu, which can, of course, just dunk on it with something like a close combat. I do think Porygon Z is the Pokemon that's most likely to Dynamax on my opponent's team as well. Um... For that reason, like I, I kind of want to just lead Urshifu and actually, I mean, we could go Raichu Urshifu, right? Because if my opponent goes Porygon Z Whimsicott, I can just switch Urshifu out into Pincursion and just go for Rising Voltage onto the Porygon turn one. I actually like that. So let's go Raichu, Pincur uh, Raichu Urshifu Pincursion in the back. Uh, Indie could be interesting, especially if it's not Dark Urshifu, because then my opponent doesn't have any Psychic Resists. However, Togekiss is a pretty good Pokemon to Dynamax here, as is the Cinderace. I'm leaning a little bit more towards Togekiss, though, just because it's a little bit bulkier. Yeah. My opponent doesn't have Flying Resists, right? So a late-game Dynamax Togekiss, I think, could be really, really strong. But either way, cool team from my opponent's end, and let's just jump into today's episode. As always, if you guys enjoy, please share support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this team has been really fun to use. I think we've had a lot of really awesome games with it very very offensive but uh you know sometimes that can make for some really exciting games so it's gonna be whimsicott and gyarados actually okay that's also okay by me because this gyarados is obviously in a lot of danger from raichu immediately the question is whether my opponent reads into the pincursion switch turn one it's a pretty obvious switch to make right um you could, for example, if you have Protect on Gyarados, just go for a Protect here, and then Tailwind, and then switch Whimsicott out into Rillaboom turn 2. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't think the Gyarados ever stays in here. Unless my opponent doesn't expect the like, um, Pincurchin switch, then they go for, like, Tailwind, Max Geyser onto Raichu. But I don't mind playing it safe on this first turn. Because it's pretty low risk. There's not much that's really threatening me here. So they're not going to switch out, which is good. Um, or at least they're not switching out with Whimsicott, I should say. Although I don't think you'd ever switch out there with Whimsicott. I think you'd Tailwind turn one. But I'm hoping my opponent just doesn't consider the switch in of Pinkurchin immediately to boost our speed. So let's see. 
<laughs> Unless they're max guarding here, this is already just GG. Oh my goodness. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Beautiful. I mean, maybe they're max guarding, but is there much reason to? I don't think so. I don't know. If you wanted to protect the gear, I, like, I guess it could make some sense. Let's, let's see if they max guard. Oh, they actually went for it. Wow. Nice play. Very nice play. However, I, I'll still take that because this means my opponent just committed their Dynamax onto Gyarados, right? And that thing doesn't scare me that much. Uh, but good play. Yeah, I thought, I mean, why not just protect there, right? That's what I was thinking. So I'm, I'm kind of surprised to see that, but that's fine. Um, now you're definitely going to switch the Whimsicott into the Rillaboom. And presumably target the Raichu down. So I'd like to conserve Raichu for post Tailwind. So I'm going to go Raichu into the Urshifu. And then just go for a Rising Voltage here into the Gyarados. Like, this is still fine, right? My, yeah, because my opponent has to play, like, has to switch out into Rillaboom here. Yep, exactly. And they have to target the Raichu slot, I think. But, nice play turn one. I, yeah, I really thought you would just go for a Protector, but I guess my opponent was afraid of, like, a Max Raichu going into the Gyarados slot. So, had I stayed in with the Urshifu, that would have been really sick, but I, I still don't regret that play turn one, because the worst case was what happened, and I still don't think that's even that bad for us here. Okay, Geyser comes out. Target's been Kirchen, actually. Wow, that's a one-hit KO? I wasn't expecting that. Okay. I think I kind of underestimated Gyarados there. I thought we would be able to survive that. It's Life Orb 2. Uh, that was a nice play by my opponent. Maybe I could have just stayed in with both Pokemon, to be honest. I think the Raichu switch out was maybe a little too obvious. I, I didn't think Concursion would go down, but maybe that's because I wasn't expecting the Life Orb damage either. And obviously, it is Life Orb. Um, that being said... Yeah, I mean, obviously I want to max Togekiss now, but the question- Like, I might consider max guarding, right? Because my opponent's already committed Dynamax turns. And I think Togekiss can sweep through my opponent in the late game. It's just, there's also reason to not max guard. Um, I think we protect the Urshifu here, for sure. Max, and just try to pick up knockouts. Just go for an Airstream on Torello Boom. Because the Raichu will obviously beat the Gyarados in the late game. So, if I can just pick up knockouts now and start uh, getting the ball rolling with Togekiss, which obviously has a favorable matchup against Whimsicott, Gyarados, and Urshifu, then you know, we'll be able to do a lot of damage. The only thing is that I'll take a lot of damage from a Max Kaiser boosted by Life Orb in the rain. So, that would have been the only reason to have Max Carded here. The more I think about it, the more I think it's better to Max Card. Just because the Geyser itself is a lot of damage onto Togekiss. So, yeah. Nice Protect turn one. Now they go for a Fake Out on the Togekiss. Okay. Covering the option of me not maxing, I guess. And they airstream. Okay. Into Urshifu. I will take that. Because this means our max Togekiss doesn't take any damage. Which is really good. Um, if it's AV Rillaboom, I think we probably need a crit to KO. But if it's not AV, then I think we're actually in great shape. Especially because we have Sucker Punch pressure coming out from the Urshifu right now. Okay, nice. Knock out Rillaboom. So, even though, like, you know, what looked like an amazing lead instantly turned really poorly because of that great turn 2 play by my opponent, I actually still think we're in fine shape. And once again, the reason for that is because we forced our opponent to commit their Dynamax Pokemon pretty early on into that Gyarados. Still curious about the Max Guard rather than the Protect, but that worked out more in our favor than anything. I just thought when I was maxing, I was like, why would you Max Guard and waste a Max turn there? But in the end, I mean, I'll take that, right? <laughs> I think that's honestly fine for us. Okay, so Whimsicott comes out. Um, we still have two turns of Max left. I believe it's the last turn of Tailwind. So I'd really like to KO the Whimsicott here. So that my opponent doesn't get another Tailwind turn up. Regardless of what they have in the back, they're not going to have an Electric or Flying Resist. So I think if we just double up onto Whimsicott here, we're good. So I'm just going to Sucker Punch it and Max Airstream it. The only downfall to this is if Whimsicott actually has Protect and goes for it here. But they don't. Perfect. Okay. So, I mean, presumably... Oh, wow, they bounce with Gyarados. I guess they were trying to avoid damage there from Togekiss, but yeah, that's why I wanted to target Whimsicott. And just Moonblast. Okay, yep, that's fine by me. I think that should secure us the game. I shouldn't get it too ahead of myself before we see what my opponent's last Pokemon is. But the bounce is cool. Because, yeah, imagine if I don't target the Gyarados slot... If I do target the Gyarados slot there, I don't KO Whimsicott. And my opponent can go for another Tailwind. But now the upside is I have another turn of Dynamax left on Togekiss. That's already two KOs in two turns. And 
I am now faster with the Raichu and the Togekiss. So this is once again exactly the win condition I was setting us, uh, ourselves up for. Um, it's just I think I played a little... Uh, turn 1 wasn't careless. Like Once again, I don't regret that turn 1 play. Turn 2 maybe could have been a little bit smarter on my end. But I don't think a Life Orb Bounce should KO either of my Pokemon right now. The only thing I'm worried about is, I don't know, a Paralysis onto the Togekiss. But I think we're free to just Rising Voltage and Airstream into Porygon. Oh, actually, Gyarados is going to be slower than us, right, on the Raichu, because he has that speed boost. So I could just Rising Voltage that slot for a KO. I'm just worried about Gyarados being really slow for some reason. But it should. That should be the case. Oh, but no, no, no. I'll get the uh, Airstream off first, which I don't want to do then. So let's Starfall into Porygon instead, Rising Voltage. Yep, I think that works. Because I don't want to give Raichu the dynamic speed boost immediately. Okay, Porygon doesn't protect, but that's fine. Takes a lot of damage. Okay. So as long as Gyarados is indeed faster than the Raichu, this should just be a guaranteed win. Oh. Is it Scarf Porygon? And we get crit? Uh, <laughs> I I guess that's the one option I should have considered. Scarf Porygon. Oh my gosh. Then I kind of tossed. Is there a reason not to have doubled up into Porygon then? I don't think you KO without a life orb either. Um, one turn of rain left though, so let's protect here. Wow, there, a lot had to go right for my opponent there, but I didn't consider the option of Scarf Porygon. I was just so... like I obviously can't have Life Orb, right, because Gyarados has it. <laughs> I just... Wow, I can't believe that. And the crit, too. This was a situation where I thought we just had the guaranteed win, but... I guess it's always better to just double up there. Okay, I mean, we should still survive a Waterfall. I just need Dazzle to KO Porygon here, which I think it does, and we need to survive a Life Orb Waterfall, which I also think we do. This, is, this ended up being closer than it needed to be. I think it, it was a guaranteed win if I actually doubled up on a Porygon. I can't believe I didn't consider Scarf Porygon. Okay, that's enough onto the Porygon. Nice. So as long as we survive a life or Waterfall, we're good. I just don't know if we do, but I had to stall up. They have Iron Head? Why didn't... Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay, that, that's just my bad. Like, I just haven't seen Scarf Porygon up until this point in the format. I don't think it's even that crazy, but that's why you always have to consider every possibility. Um, I do want to quickly calc if Scarf Porygon does just one-shot Raichu. Because if so, then, yeah, the crit obviously not mattering. It means that I should have just... Uh, I really should have doubled up onto Porygon, I guess. Yeah, the, the crit is... It, you have a slight chance to KO us, but it, it's an 18.8% .8 chance, even if you're modest max with try attack so, yeah, my opponent needed the crit, and then they needed, uh... I, it was just the crit. See, if we airstream there, then we, we ensure that the Raichu outspeed. So, I should have just gone for the original play, which was airstream rising voltage into the Porygon, because even if Porygon protects there, Gyarados bounces into the Togekiss or the Raichu. You don't KO either of those, and even if you paralyze the Togekiss, we're at plus three speed. So, that was actually kind of a throw. Like, I think it's a guaranteed win if we double up onto Porygon. So, that goes to show how you need to always consider what items your opponents can have. I just... Yeah, I mean, like, with Porygon, I just always assume Life Orb, and it's obvious that Gyarados didn't have, like, Gyarados had the Life Orb, so Porygon couldn't have it, so I, I should have, like, thought more about what item could have we could have lost to there, so it's, like, a very specific scenario. Like, my opponent needed to have the Scarf, and they needed to either get a high roll or get a critical hit there, and unfortunately, they got both. Um, but we had a guaranteed win if we just double up onto Porygon, so. <laughs> Not a game. Okay, um, this next one, let's see. And they had Iron Head too, so it was Iron Head Waterfall Airstream Protect. If they don't have Iron Head there, yeah, they also don't win. Uh, because I think we survived the Waterfall, but like I said, we had a guaranteed win if we double up on the Laporeon, so always consider your late game win cons. My opponent, this game, doesn't have any terrain control, which makes me think Raichu and Pinkurchin actually can just come out as a lead, especially because we set up terrain to stop uh, Sleep Powders coming from the Venusaur. Yeah, I like that. Who do I want to Dynamax is the question in this one. Um, I think we want Urshifu. 
Urshifu Cinderace was really nice for us yesterday, so I kind of like that again here, because you can give the Urshifu either attack boosts or speed boosts. That last one was just so careless on my end. Um, unless a plus... Unless... No, I mean, you weren't even boosted on Gyarados. Yeah, I, I did need to respect the Gyarados there. And, like, Porygon Z potentially could have Trick Room as well. Uh, yeah, could, I mean, if a Trick Room's there, it doesn't matter. Like, it had to have Scarf, but I just needed to respect the Scarf option, and I didn't, and I get punished for it, which is totally my bad. Okay, Torkoal and Venusaur, which is fine by me, because we get the terrain up immediately, which is already a good start. The question is, do you Dynamax the um, Venusaur and, like, Max Quake? Because that could make sense. Urshifu in the back with Cinderace. I'd love to Rising Voltage in a Torkoal, but that's so obvious, right? So I'm thinking of actually expanding Force into Venusaur and Rising Voltage into it. I think Venusaur maxes, yeah. So, if we, I mean, just by getting all this chip damage off immediately, I think that's a pretty good start because then we'll probably be in Sucker Punch KO range from whatever we have. And there's triple Sucker Punch on this team. That last match is just an example of how, of how you need to consider everything from your opponent's end. Like, I thought we had the guaranteed win and I didn't consider the Choice Carve option, and that's totally my bad. Like, did they get lucky? A little bit, yeah, but could I have mitigated that RNG? I absolutely could have. Oh my, that is so strong. Yep, and they max quake. Okay, that's fine. It's gonna go out into Raichu, yep. I wonder if... I was thinking, like, if I max Raichu and actually go for max Psychic there? But then I lose the terrain. I think I'd much rather want to max the um, Cinderace in the back. It's Life Orb, too. Nice. Scorching Sands. That's cool. <laughs> but it also does no damage to Pink Urchin. And Rising Voltage. Beautiful. Nice. That is the power of Alolan Raichu against the non- I mean, against the Dynamax Venusaur still does 80% with the non-max move. Um, yeah, I think we can just bring out the Cinderace now. Mainly because I know there's the Porygon potentially in the back. My opponents also set up the sun, so like, okay, they bring out Togekiss, that's also fine by me. I mean, I think Cinderace just sweeps this, right? Because like, here I can just max, go for Flare into the Togekiss, and just go for a Rising Voltage into Torkoal. That seems fine to me. I'm still really frustrated myself for that last game, but I think, you know, a game like that is just a clear mistake on my end. There is just no downside ever into doubling the Porygon, because we know Gyarados is committing a bounce, so... That one bad play ends up costing me the game, and once again, like, you know, this is a good example of how, like, some people might look at that game and be like, oh, wow, like, that critical hit, like, you got unlucky, but it's like, I didn't make the best play there, and as a result, I get punished because my opponent had that one, like, the one way they can win is uh, by go going for the target Angela Raichu, so great target selection there, but yeah, Max for just one hit KO's Togekiss here, which is nice, so, yeah. Mistakes like that happen sometimes, you know, and you just need to consider the op every uh, item option. And in, in this game, it was like, because Porygon doesn't have its most common item, which is Life Orb, like, Scarf is really the like second most obvious answer, right? It's just that I I, actually, I don't think I've played against the Scarf Porygon up until this point, so it wasn't something that even crossed my mind. But you should always consider every single possibility and every single set your opponent has, not just the most common one. Ooh, Dracovish in the back. I wonder if Ficious Ren KOs us here. Doesn't matter with Urshifu in the back though, right? Uh, I'm just gonna airstream the Torkoal and voltage it. Yeah. Okay, we're faster anyway. Nice. So that should be game. Yeah, I mean, like, this is why almost every team has like a Rillaboom nowadays, right? Or an NDD, I guess, or some way to manage the, t the terrain. Like, my opponent had nothing for terrain. I think Duraludon maybe would have been their best answer against Pink Hurch and Raichu, but they, you know, they didn't leave that. Um, that's oh, Rock Slide, actually. Okay, makes sense. You have the chance of flinching. Strong move into Pink Urchin, but we do not flinch. And, I mean, this Pink Urchin's actually been doing a lot of damage, right? That first Rising Voltage into... Oh my! <laughs> Did anyone just see that? We just got a one-hit KO onto Dracovish with Pink Urchin. Remember when everyone was, like, saying Dracovish was just this insanely strong Pokemon in the early format? I mean, it is a really good Pokemon, undoubtedly. Uh, someone should clip that in now. Yeah, people don't have faith in Pink Urchin, which admittedly, I think someone asked me on stream a while ago. Yeah, I'm curious about the team here. Charcoal, Porygon, 
No protects really, so yeah, I know his band did as well. Yeah, actually, the lack of protect on anything meant this was like hyper offense eats that kind of stuff up because I uh, like your opponent just doesn't really have a safe play to you know get around all these attacks turn by turn by turn. So yeah, uh, I think if anything, yeah, someone asked me on stream a while ago like what I thought about Pinkurchin, and I was like I don't know if I really believe it, but honestly, this assault vest rising voltage Pinkurchin like it's a pretty standard set for the most part, but it does a lot of damage. Um, uh, I'm still thinking about that first game though. Those those games are also good though because it's like <laughs> and we go up against a very familiar team there. The games like the first one are good in the sense that is it frustrating to lose, especially when you kind of like uh, make a major misplay in the end and you get unlucky. Yes, but at least you know there's a very clear like you know correction that I could have made to have done better. Okay, so we're going up against Hale. We know what this team has. Gorilla Boom, gonna be essential. We know the Sandslash doesn't have Max Quake, which is in our favor here. I mean, Raichu one-shots almost everything. Um, I have to respect Gothitelle trapping us in, because to me, that's like one of the strongest modes on that team. Togekiss is interesting, even though there's Double Ice. As is Cinderace. Actually, I really like Cinderace plus Raichu with the pink pivot into Pinkurchin, because the only thing my Cinderace doesn't really want to go up against is the opposing Cinderace, which Raichu can just destroy, right? My opponent leaves anything but Cinderace, we can just max and go to town from there. Um, last one's between Urshifu. Urshifu is interesting here, or Togekiss. I don't think I bring it. I, I barely bring in to deal with this team. It's by far the least common Pokemon. Hmm. Honestly, I like Urshifu as a late game pin here against my opponent's team, because I don't know if Togekiss really provides that much value anyway, and I think going for even priority sucker punches are really nice against this team, so let's see. Ugh. Still thinking about that ending of that first game. Um, yeah, there's just no world in which we don't double up into the, the Porygon. Nightshell's Rillaboom, okay. I don't mind that, because this is, I mean, Cinderace just wins immediately here, right? Like. What do I want to do here? There's there's two options I'm considering. The first one is actually to knock out the Rillaboom. Um, and let my opponent get Aurora Veil up. Oh, they can't even Aurora Veil if I max Flare into a Rillaboom. Wait, yeah, so this is super free. We just max Flare and we switch out Raichu into Pinkurchin, which allows us to have terrain for the rest of the game if we KO Rillaboom turn one. Yeah. This was kind of the problem that I had with that team when playing with it, is that Ninetales is just so, so bad if you don't have weather control, and almost, I mean, every team in this metagame has some way to control the weather, whether it's a Pokemon that has an ability that can change it, like Tyranitar, or if it's just a Pokemon that has, you know, an attack, like Max Flare, Max Geyser, uh, Max Rockfall. So this puts us in a great position, right? Because we get the sun up, we change the terrain, which means Raichu is uh, primed to sweep in the late game. And the only resist that my opponent has to Raichu is this Rillaboom. Okay. They actually don't go for uh, Grassy Glide, which I was kind of expecting. Oh, actually they might have, right? I changed the terrain. Nice. Yeah, that's why I switched into the... I, I don't want Raichu taking damage there, because a Grassy Glide boosted by Grassy Terrain honestly might do enough to, like, maybe not knock us out, but it would do a lot. So, like, what, what can Ninetales do here? At best, Aurora Veil? Yeah. Nice. Like, when I, I think when we were playing with that team, Ninetales was essentially, it felt like dead weight so often, but the thing is you feel pressure to bring it still because you, you kind of feel like you need it for the, um, what was I going to say? You, you kind of feel like you need it um, for the Ninetales, oh sorry, the Sand Slash. So Cinderace comes out from our opponent's end. They're going to Dynamax Cinderace for sure, right? But I think as long as we just keep up the pace with Airstream, we're fine here. So I don't mind just going for Airstream onto the... Cinderace. And just Rising Voltage it. Like, if I'm my opponent, I switch Ninetales out here into Sand Slash, or maybe Pre Marina. Let's see what it is. Yep. So, like, at this point, Raichu just hard wins the game, right? Because we have terrain control. Uh, if you max the Cinderace, you can't control the terrain with that. So then I just bring in Raichu and just Rising Voltage everything. So I think we're in good shape. Which is why the lead was so important, uh, and that's why, like, yeah, if you lead Rillaboom into this team, I I'm never leading with terrain unless you have terrain, pretty much. Uh, unless I'm making, like, a super, super hard read, so 
This puts us in a really good spot, regardless of who some Darius targets, even if we lose the speed tie. We even end up going first, which is nice. Um, I was thinking if there's a world in which that works against us. Be oh, actually, yeah. Okay, it doesn't end up mattering here anyway, because Airstream just does so much damage. I was saying the world in which it works uh, against us is if they G-Max Powerball into our Cinderace because Sun is up. That probably is just a knockout, but then uh, Pink Urchin just KOs with the Rising Voltage, so it's fine. But they target Pink Urchin. Nice. Yeah, so I, I think we pretty much locked our opponent in here. There was really no way around it. Um, yeah, now I just get Raichu out and click Rising Voltage a bunch. So... Yeah, this Raichu can just be so good in the late game as a sweeper. Uh, it's just rare to see that happen because obviously we're leading with it the majority of the time. Uh, part of me wanted to go for Max Dark. Nah, there's no value there. Let's just Airstream into Cinderace. That should be a KO. And Rising Voltage into Primarina. The Primarina's have Salt Vest, I believe, but with Terrain up and Primarina being grounded, it should just be a one-hit KO still. And someone, someone uh, very smartly pointed out the fact that I miscalced against Togekiss one of the previous episodes where I was like, oh, it's really bulky, but Rising Voltage works if your opponent is grounded, uh, where you get that, that special uh, extra boost if they're grounded. To be honest, I, I don't really know what how my opponent really beats this team, um, and that was kind of the struggle that I had when I was using the Ninetales Sand Slash team. Um, like, it feels like it can't put on pressure immediately because the support for Cinderace, which is a Pokemon often maxes, isn't that great. I think, yeah, I mean, you could lead Ninetales Sand Slash, but then it's like, do you max the Sand Slash? Probably not, right? Like, I could just go into Pinkurch and Rising Voltage turn one. And actually, I think one thing I really like about this team is just the number of Sucker Punches, because it's so easy to bring a Pokemon down to Sash with this team, with this team. Um, whether it's just a, you know, max move from Cinderace or Rising Voltage from the Raichu. If you bring something down to its Sash, then something even like Pinkurch, you could just finish off uh, and get the final blow off. So, nice. Um, might as well just Sucker Punch here. And Rising Voltage. Yeah, and this is uh, the value of having G-Max, or sorry, the regular Cinderace over G-Max Cinderace for weather control, right? I, I think a lot of players kind of looked at this team and were like, why run regular Cinderace over G-Max Cinderace? Uh, and I think in one of the games we've had, uh, there was one in which like the extra damage output from uh, G-Max would have been better. But what's interesting about regular Cinderace is like, yeah, you lose a little bit of damage, but then that fire damage uh, becomes increased in subsequent turns because the sun is up. Uh, and of course, you also are able to change the weather, which was really valuable in that last game. No terrain control once again, wow. That's what we like to see with this team, I'll take it. Uh, I have to really respect Trick Room here though, but... Hmm. I, I don't know, I kind of want to just go right, uh, right Chupin Kershin. That seems okay. One thing what I'm about to suggest might sound crazy, but we could potentially Dynamax Pinkurchin depending on what my opponent leads with. I guess my only fear is that they lead Hitmontop and uh, Porygon. Um, is that like a pretty surefire way of setting up Trick Room? One way I could get around that is like NDD Cinderace. Because I set up Terrain, you can't fake out, and I can Expanding Force Max Knuckle turn one. Or High Jump Kick uh, Expanding Force. Huh. I'm actually considering that. Because I feel like my opponent has to set up Trick Room in this game. And Raichu sweeps in this late game, doesn't it? Alright, I'm going to make the read on the uh, Porygon Hitmon top lead here. Even if my opponent doesn't lead that, like, I still think we have plenty of options. Cinderace is mighty fine against my opponent's team, but we bring double terrain this game, so that's interesting. I don't know, this game was a little hard in team preview because I think you could make a pretty good argument for any Pokemon in this matchup, honestly. Um, yeah, I think, like, Togekiss is really good offensively, Urshifu is also really good offensively, so... I might not have made the right choice here, but if they go Hitmontop, Porygon... Okay, they go with Venusaur and Porygon. Uh... So this is interesting because you have to respect goggles on NDD, right? Like, also, are you gonna trick room here? I don't know about that. What I want to do turn one, quite frankly, is just go for high jump kick and expanding force. I I want damage onto the Porygon. That's the main reason I want to go for this play. I think Venusaur might even Dynamax and could if if my opponent makes. Actually, I was gonna say they could Max Quake. 
The one play I'm worried about is Porygon into Torkoal, Venusaur Max, Max Quake into the Cinderace. But even if you do that, actually, um, okay. Is that him on top coming out now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's really good. I mean, this was the lead I was expecting. So we actually get the same scenario, but maybe it's even better for us. Please don't miss high jump kick. Okay. Nice. I wonder if this double up is enough to KO. Oh, I think it is. Let's see it. <laughs> Alright, well, my game plan worked. It, it just worked out even better than I expected. Uh, because my opponent even switches in the hit on top. We ended up critting the Porygon there, but I don't really think it mattered. I had like, what, 15%-ish? I think Expanding Force was picking up that knockout. Alright, that's the dream turn one. Um, and now what's so awkward is, if, do you bring out the Venusaur? Uh, or do you just hard bring out Torkoal? Oh, it's a Zoomerl, actually, is the last one. Okay. Yeah, so my opponent brought Venusaur without Sun, which is interesting. You can't fake out right now with the hit on top. I think you have to Dynamax the Azumarill. You could change the terrain, but then I think Raichu Pinkurchin closes this out. Obviously, I expanding Force this turn with the, um, with the NDD. Which is what I want to do with this. Bounce? My opponent probably, what, Star Falls? They could max Geyser into us, too. Bounce is actually an interesting option. Or just max and then Airstream. I don't think we max Cinderace, given that we're Intimidated. Okay. I'm just gonna Pyro Ball here on Ascending Expanding Force. Let's see. <laughs> okay. We take those. I mean, I mean, to be honest, like, I think the last two games exemplify why terrain control is so... Like... For the most part, we've been going up against teams with terrain control. I'll play out fifth game today, why not? Uh, these games have gone by really, really fast. I'm just frustrated at myself for that first game still. Like, that was such an inexcusable loss on my end. Um, I, I was just, like, trying to get a little fancy there. And I, yeah. Airstream Rising Voltage wins 100% of the time. Even if you, because it's like, even if you paralyze the Togekiss, it's whatever. Let's not dwell on it. I'm glad at least we didn't, like, hard tail from that and lose the subsequent games. But that last one was funny. Um, okay. <laughs> Alright, like like I mentioned, I had a couple of rough games, what was it, two or three episodes back? Um, and so our rating tanked a little bit, so hopefully we can jump back into the top 1,000. But either way, it has been one very, very fun run with this team. And uh, yeah, cannot complain. Alright, this time around they have some contrain control. They also have an Octillery, which is sick. I want to see what that does. Our opponent's team is actually really scary, I think, because they have natural speed with t X control. So I think I, I actually might have to go with, uh, like, try to sweep with Cinderace, because Cinderace offensively is really good against that team. Um, so, for example, Cinderace plus redirection is the approach that I want to go with in this game. It's just that, like, Raichu with terrain, ah, it's just... Am I really going to be Raichu Pink Urchin into T-Tar X control? That seems like a bad idea. I like the uh, NDD plus the Cinderace lead at least. I think that puts on a lot of good pressure immediately. Keep in mind, they don't have... I mean, they only their only terrain control is NDD, so our expanding forces will still do a lot. So Cinderace, NDD... I don't like... I was going to say I don't like Togekiss much, but it's valuable. Maybe solely for follow me here. Otherwise, the easy choices are, I think, Raichu and Urshifu. I'm gonna bring Raichu, because we don't get to play with it very much, and Urshifu, because we don't get to play with it very much, and we've used Togekiss plenty of times on this channel. Alright, let's see. Well, last game was funny, though. Yeah, I mean, it would have been near impossible for my point. I, I, I think it would have been impossible, like, actually, if we played properly, but you should never forfeit that early on. Because your opponent can always throw, kind of like how I did in the end of that first game. I think that's just T-Tar Exca. Oh no, it's actually Exca Togekiss. Ooh. Uh, that is pretty scary, actually. Let's see, they're not Mold Breaker. Uh, but they're not faster right now. You could obviously switch Togekiss out into Tyranitar turn one, and then just Max Quake into Cinderace. You could also just follow me. Max. I actually think this is a great lead by my opponent. Excellent, excellent lead. Um, I mean, I, I 
kind of feel obligated to follow me here, which I don't have a safe play turn one, which I hate. If I'm my opponent, I don't know. I, I think Togekiss probably follow me's. I'm going to play as safe as possible, at least this turn. Uh, I'm actually going to airstream into Excadrill to break a potential Sash and follow me. The thing is, this is not like ever a super safe play, but it covers for both options. Okay, Togekiss is going to stay in, so that's indicating to me follow me. It also allows me to change my typing. Oh, actually, because I was changing my typing... No, I still needed to follow me in case Togekiss switched out into Tyranitar, because then you can just go for Max Quake. I just think this play is a little bit too safe, because I don't think you ever hard risk a Max Quake into Cinderace turn 1. Although, that being said, still a relatively safe play. Let's see if Exodrill maxes. Yeah, it doesn't... Whoa, what? Okay. Huh. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I, if Based on how my opponent played that turn one, it should be a Swords Dance coming out from Excadrill, but the upside is now I can just go for another Ash, uh, Max Airstream and I'll outspeed Excadrill, even if you switch in Sand. Huh. Ally switch instead of follow me. Didn't expect that. But, okay. It, it ends up being a pseudo follow me. Like, I was expecting the follow me to come out there anyway. Swords Dance? Yeah. That's fine, though, because if you have Swords Dance, it's normally Protect, Earthquake, and uh, Iron Head, which means you actually can't really hit this Cinderace at all right now, actually. I think it's better to just play safe here in Airstream into Togekiss. Togekiss could Protect here, but that's fine, I think. I'm just going to follow me here. Once again, like... Oh, I didn't need to follow me there. I didn't need to follow me there. Because if you switch into Tyranitar, you're going to outspeed the Cinderace. So that was a free expanding force. Yeah. You can see how these like little small things can really make a big deal throughout you know the course of a matchup. Like, if I expanding force there, I break Exodrill's Focus Ash, which means... And it does a lot of damage to single target Exodrill, right? So that was a major mistake of mine. Oh, they actually have Rock Slide? Wow. Okay, so I guess because Rock Slide then, they, they clearly don't have Protect or Max Guard, which might actually work out in our favor, because now we can just Helping Hand Max Flare into Excadrill. Oh, they're bringing in Clef. Huh. That's a threat. Ah, uh, that's actually a really, really good bring. <sighs> Actually, I don't even- do I need a Flare here? Because I could also just Expanding Force because I'm faster right now. What's also interesting is going for a Max Knuckle to change into Fighting type this turn. I think I'd rather just get a KO onto the Clefairy. I think- I would think Max Flare plus Expanding Force KOs. It's just that my opponent hasn't maxed this game, which is so smart on their end. But I have Urshifu in the back, right? That was a great decision not to max last turn. Oh, but Clef protects, and Excadrill doesn't protect. Wait, I, th I think we just stole the game back. Yeah. This is why you always target the non-follow-me the non -follow -me Pokemon. Yeah. This should just be a KO with Expanding Force. Oh, it's not even Sash? Okay. Wow. I mean, I really messed up by going for the air, uh, follow me well, it's not an entire mess up, because I guess my opponent could have max Excadrill and gone for max Rockfall. But, yeah, that's, uh, this is a good lesson in why, like, it, yeah, if you're ever, especially against Clefairy, right? Because Clefairy has no offensive pressure whatsoever, so players are almost always going to want to just click something like Protect. You can go for Helping Hand as well, but in that slot, if I do double up and Clefairy and Excadrill gets an attack off, that's very scary. Now all we need to do is knock out the Clefairy, and Urshifu just hard wins against Tyranitar. And we have Focus Blast right here in the back. My only fear now is missing Pyro Ball, or Clefairy getting a double protect, which they totally might go for, but I think we just go for Expanding Force and Pyro Ball. They're, like, I could help me hand here, but I'd rather Expanding Force and the off chance Pyro Ball misses. And our opponent actually forfeits, but I don't think they needed to there, because one win con is you... Um, double Protect Clefairy, Rock Slide double KOs us, and then you die to Max Tyranitar in the late game. So, yeah. A bunch of early forfeits today from our opponents. I think it's just like we, we've often like brought the momentum so much in our favor that it's hard to come back from, but 
That being said, I think a lot of these games are still winnable from our opponent's end. It's just that they have to really dig themselves out of a hole. They need to make every prediction correctly or hope for us to throw. But as you guys saw in that first game, you know, our opponent didn't give up. And they had that one win con, which is me not knocking out Porygon. Porygon then knocking out Raichu. And I just didn't read enough into that. So we end up going 4-1. and one, And I mean, that first game totally should have been a win as well if I just double up into the Porygon. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not talking about the crit once again because it's like I deserve to lose given that I made the suboptimal play. So... Always consider what your most optimal play is at every position in the game, even if it feels like you're in a really advantageous position, because all it takes, especially with a hyper offensive team like this, is one really bad uh, game, and then everything goes kaboom, right? But uh, that's going to be it for this one, guys. A really fun episode. Thank you, as always, for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed. Once again, guys, go check out rich.com slash VGC for all those awesome Ridge products, including the Ridge wallet. And uh, yeah, thank you guys, as always, for watching. I'll see you soon. All right, peace.